Well, welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you here um, at another um, one of our little get togethers here uh, sponsored by the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive. Um, tonight, we're really pleased um, to have the group Post Ballet join us tonight. Uh, we'll be having them uh, introduce three new pieces, or three, one new piece that's never been uh, seen, shown before, and uh, two other pieces. And uh, we're really happy to have them there, here. Um, and I'd like to bring in, to start with, um, Robert Deckers, who's the director of Post Ballet. Robert, if you could join us. Hi, Sean. Good evening. Hi there. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, for being part of this, and um, welcome uh, again to the right. audience. We're really, yeah, really, really happy to have you all here. Um, I'll, I'll say right up front, actually, before we even uh, talk to Robert about about the pieces and what we're going to see tonight, um, I'll say that uh, I encourage everyone watching um, to log in to start using the um, the uh, YouTube chat function that you should see on the right side of your screen if you're watching this on your computer, and uh, just type anything you want in there, hopefully relevant to what you're seeing on the screen and hearing. Maybe not any. Um, and <laughs> really anything at all. Um, but we would love to um, uh, have questions to answer or uh, comments that you have to read aloud. And you know, it's always exciting to us to be interacting with you, the audience, as we do this. It's, you know, it makes it a little more similar to uh, something live that we'd be doing in person. Uh, so Robert, thank you and Post Ballet for being part of this uh, really exciting evening. Um, maybe you can give us a little overview of just the, the three pieces we're going to see and then talk about the first one in more detail. Sure. So um, Post Ballet, uh, as many arts organizations have been doing this year, has uh, been thinking of different ways to approach the work that we make. Um, traditionally, we do a lot of work uh, as live performance, but we have been exploring film even before the pandemic. Uh, the second of the three pieces that you'll see was actually uh, created and filmed in January of this year. So it's it's a pre-pandemic piece. <laughs> and the first and third works that we'll be showing tonight are world premieres. The first piece is titled Eight Whiskas. Um, it's a piece with music by John Cage, by the music of, of the same name, and performed by Helen Kim, who's associate principal violin, associate second, second principal, violin of the San Francisco <laughs> Symphony. <laughs> um, so Helen and I um, have been working on a couple projects together during this time, um, including Eight Whiskas. And the work was choreographed by myself and the dancer, Emily Hansel, who's uh, performing in the piece. And Alexander and Valentina Reneff Olson did the filming. So um, it's a work that we created. Um, just Emily and I kind of got together and met up at the AIDS Memorial Grove in the Golden Gate Park. Um, and we're just sort of exploring our environment. Um, and the process was very meditative, very um, quiet. And we kind of had a lot of time talking with one another and um, sort of talking to the space as well. And um, really grateful for um, the whole team that worked on this project. So happy to be premiering it here tonight with you guys. Oh, how great. Uh, so this will be really exciting. Um, and uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more after you've seen the work. Um, and for now, we'll fade away and we'll uh, bring up um, Eight Whiskers.
Well, what a beautiful piece. That's just uh, absolutely breathtaking. So uh, congratulations, Robert. What a, what a, a wonderful work. Um, so nice. yeah, sure. Just it's so terrific. Um, let's see. Uh, where do we start? Is there anything you want to say about the piece now that, now that people have seen it and had it in their eyes, <laughs> in their ears? Uh, what what uh, what kind of things would you like to talk about? Yeah, I think, you know, um, kind of what I started just referencing earlier, I think, you know, for us um, in this piece and just in all the pieces we've been making outdoors, you know, I think, you know, everything we do, whether it's our training in a studio or a performance on a stage or it's in all of these boxes and um, having this time where we can't be in those spaces and we're finding ourselves in forests and on beaches on the sides of mountains. Um, I feel like getting to like be with uh, with nature and having it really impact the work we're making um, has felt so just, I don't know, invigorating for me as an artist. Um, of course, I look forward to going back to like live performance and especially sure. working with other people and, um, but there's been something really um, wonderful, and I feel like a lot of artists have uh, perhaps felt this as well this year, um, just kind of of leaving a lot of the like the actual physical spaces and what that does to the work we make. And um, that piece to me was just really, you know, it was just a gift to get to go see Emily every day in the in the <laughs> grove and just kind of discover elements of that space um, in an intimate way. Yeah, sure. And yeah, I think, you know, for it, speaking to what you said, I think that, um, you know, using John Cage as a, as a, as a you know, perfect uh, starting point, I think, for that sort of thing, since he's you know, very into nature, kind of uh, making its way into the pre-constructed uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. material of music and everything. So that all, that's uh, really terrific. Um, can you tell me anything about how, you know, in terms of constructing, I mean, obviously you had the length of the piece of music to start with, um, but, but anything else about how you constructed the dance around the uh, score or, or um, anything like that? Yeah, um, the, the piece of music is uh, actually notated very um, specifically. Loosely, yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's a very difficult piece to play. Um, and it's in eight sections. So what we did was we took each of those sections and kind of made little chapters for ourselves. Um, so the musicality is very specific for um, the performer. And yeah, we really kind of had, we was like, okay, this first chapter is this tree. What are we experiencing in this tree? And then the second chapter, we moved to the rock. Um, and then kind of we decided instead of like a physical space, the third chapter, um, we were talking about how I guess Emily would create little scavenger hunts for her uh, younger mm. siblings. And so that became a section and just sort of like creating this sort of treasure hunt for whom, who knows, um, <laughs> for us really. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, and it was, you know, I think I, the more I heard them, the first time I heard it, I was like, okay, how, like what is my path to creating this choreography? And um, the more we heard it, you know, you really get used to each of those different, um, you know, um, bow strokes and, Plus, right. uh, there's different ideas and emotions that we kind of found in it as we work through yeah. it. So. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. It's yeah. uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely great. Definitely, definitely comes across. And I, and how did you work in terms of filming it with that? Again, you're in this very open space. You don't have a you know, proscenium or a, you know an audience in a particular spot. How did you work with the uh, filmmaker to to kind of you know create that as part of the work? Yeah. Um, so the team that uh, made this project, uh, Alexander and Valentina Renef Olson, they're both dancers. And so they sort of have that understanding. I sent them rehearsal videos. Um, so I think they kind of had a sense of where the, you know, the piece would go. And, and they were, it was really fun. We just kind of, again, you know, you never know when you're filming outdoors, what the weather is going to be like, yeah. if there's going to be, you know, a, a party going on in the park, who knows what <laughs> you're going to find. Um, so luckily it was a very sunny, quiet day, uh, which is a, a very nice gift. Um, yeah. And we just, you know, they, they just sort of almost danced with Emily as, as she was moving. I love all of those sweeping shots that they captured. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so it's, good. A, it's still, it's a very quiet, still piece. So I feel like the movement of the camera really keeps it alive. So I was really yeah, definitely see how animates it, things. Yeah. Oh, so good. That's great. Um, let's see. Well, we're going to move on to the, uh, the next piece, which is called Surface Down. So I'd like to bring uh, Vanessa Thiessen in to to join us. Hi. The choreographer of this piece. Welcome, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. And um, yeah, so maybe maybe you can uh, introduce this piece for us and tell us a little bit about about it. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Surface Down is part of a larger work called Lyra, and it's this 
massive collaboration that's that's happening. Um, but this section alone is uh, very much part of the story. And Lyra, we're really basing it off of the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. And so this work is going to follow that as a thread and then have different abstract things within it. Um, but this section was made pre-pandemic. So after just hearing about, you know, the process of um, the last piece, this one is very more like very much more traditional. We made it in the studio, we performed it, and then it became a film. And so even trying to remember how that goes <laughs> seems so far away. Um, but it, it's a beautiful trio. Um, it's in the story right at the moment, the turning point really of the story where um, Eurydice is about to be bit by the snake in some version. In our version, it's um, with Atropos the Fate, who is about to bring her into the underworld and sort of that, that trio between uh, Eurydice and Atropos, knowing that her fate is happening and she has to go to the underworld and also wanting to stay with Orpheus and stay uh, in that, that beautiful um, overworld celebration. And so, um, yeah, that's what this piece is. Um, it, it's a beautiful trio and I love how it was filmed. And um, the work takes place in a, a park with an abandoned railroad. And so, yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, again, I'll, I'll uh, just in, uh, encourage any viewers, if you have questions or comments about it, feel free to use the, the chat box. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, take you right into Surface Down right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thanks. Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, wow, what an, another fantastic piece. <laughs> great. Um, I'll point out uh, at the beginning that was the, the great and, and one of a kind uh, Andy Meyerson uh, playing percussion there. Um, and um, uh, Vanessa, can you, and we, I know they just flashed on the screen, but can you name the, the dancers who were performing? Yeah, that's um, Emily Hansel, Baba Tunji Johnson, and Ma Marceline Park Harrison. Fantastic. Good. Um, let's see. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit more about, about the piece, how you conceived of it, how much you were interacting with the environment and things like that. Yeah, sure. Um, so this one, again, was created in the studio first. And so uh, we really formed the characters. It, I think it's very important for this piece that each dancer develops. Uh, we do it together. We develop our version of this story of this myth. There have been so many versions that we want to create our own language for it. And that is a movement. And so um, we first created that, our character landscapes for, for each individual, and then we brought it together to kind of um, interact and see how that would naturally happen with movement. Um, what I, I took inspiration for this one off of navigation of like compasses, mm. sundials, and also clocks, thinking about time and, and transportation and how how that happens. And um, so images and kind of a feeling of time passing uh, for me was really how that section came about. Wow, very interesting. I, I, I would not have guessed that, but now that you've said it, it makes perfect sense in my mind. That's really great. Um, and what about the, the location? Tell me where that was and what, how, how you interacted with that. Yeah, well, I knew that I wanted some place that looked like traveling and hmm. So we kind of played around with a, a bunch of different ideas. I love the railroad tracks. I love that because it just says going somewhere. Um, and so I found a place in Richmond um, out there. Uh, I can't remember the name of the park. Robert, do you remember the name of the park? Color Beach. Yes. Yeah. And it was really fun. We, we spent like an afternoon just walking around there and seeing different areas. Um, you had kind of done some pre-scoping and found that location. And it was really cool to see kind of what we were drawn to. And then when Ben Tarquin, the, the cinematographer came and how it actually looked in his camera and the different things that he was drawn to. Um, and, you know, he's such a wonderful collaborator. Um, I think we've been really lucky to have so many amazing cinematographers working with us this year, or this past year. And um, yeah, that was really fun to see, you know, that last shot, um, you know, yeah. just from above and different things. So. Um, it's really cool, I think, like seeing the work first in a, a proscenium setting and, um, you know, which is kind of like our first language, I think, is making work in that kind of a space and then seeing it translate into film and all the different details, you know, getting that close up of the hands in those moments, I think is, was really great how you kind of found those, those moments, Vanessa, to, to highlight in the film. Yeah, I'd say it certainly, um, it certainly felt like a, a, it was. It almost felt to me like it was made for film. I would not have guessed that it was originally, um, you know, meant to be a live performance on stage. So that was, um, you know, uh, just terrific and and kind kind of overwhelming uh, in a way. There's just there's just a lot happening um, in front of you at all times. You know, there's it just you know, many things happening. The the rhythm of it is kind of just always uh, tripping over itself. Almost it seems like things overlapping, and um, it really does feel like you're you're traveling, like you're moving from one place to another. I think. Yeah. Good, good. Um, this is, and again, this is still like a small moment in an epic piece. So to me, yeah. I'm already imagining the beginning of it ramping up to that. This is a kind of a climax before the underworld and then it's gonna mellow out again. So I'm glad yeah. you felt that way. <laughs> yeah, def definitely. Uh, we have, we have uh, one interesting comment from um, our, our friend Chris Brown, uh, who says that doing the footwork on the railroad ties and rocky surfaces must have been very challenging. Is that true? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we first cleaned up a bunch of trash. Uh, uh, right, of course. <laughs> yeah, step one was was many bags of trash, and um, shout out to Allie Taylor Lang, the executive director, who was yeah, amazing yeah, and, and brought trash bags and donuts uh, pre-shoot, which is wow. uh, quite, a, quite a gift, yeah. Uh, a phenomenal artist. All of the collaborators, the dancers are just so intelligent and creative and they are able to work their magic whether they're on 
dirt, railroad track, mud, sand, <laughs> all of it is they're just so intuitive that they were able to really step fine. They were telling me by the end that it's so normal. That started off feeling uncomfortable <laughs> dancing on those tracks and trying to your nap. And by the end, by hours, six hours later, they said it just felt like normal floor. So yeah, it's pretty impressive. Very cool. All right. Well, great. Um, unless there's anything else either of you wanted to say, I thought maybe we could move on to Folia. Um, and for that one, I'm going to bring in yet one more person to our screen who is the composer, Danny Clay. Danny, if you don't mind joining us. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me. Hi, hi. Yeah, of course. Um, always nice to have you back. Um, and uh, maybe, Robert, you can give us an overview because you told me that the, the music that Danny wrote kind of uh, was the beginning of the piece. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, I'll let Danny talk a little more about his music in a moment, but um, it was a piece, um, I've had the amazing opportunity to work with Danny on a few pieces over the last couple of years. Um, and this was a piece of his that I've listened to many, many times and I see movement to it and it just hadn't worked out uh, for a piece to you know, be created to that. And um, as Vanessa and I were speaking this fall and she was talking about making a film with uh, Colleen and Cody and creating something outdoors, um, I was kind of going through different pieces and I and La Folia came to mind and I sent it to her and I feel like you just called back and you're like, yep, this is the one, this is, this is the piece, this is our <laughs> music. Um, and so I was so happy to see the, the two of you connecting um, through this process and, and Vanessa's choreography, you know, to Danny's music, I feel like I'm looking forward to everyone seeing it, but uh, <laughs> that physicality that you bring Vanessa with the music, it feels just like such a beautiful marriage, so. Yeah, great. So uh, Danny, maybe you can talk a little bit about, about your piece. Sure. I mean, uh, again, it's like, so I, you know, I, I've, I've worked with Robert before and it's, it's uh, you know, I admire Vanessa's work and post ballet's work through the years. It's been something like five years since we've collaborated and um, it's all, we've always done something new together. So this is the first time I've had a previous, like, like a work from, I think this works about six or seven years old now, which for me feels quite old, um, uh, uh, set choreographed. So uh, it's it's just like such a joy to hear this piece uh, in a brand new way. Um, but the original commission from 2013 or 2014 was for a group called Musa Baroque based here in the Bay Area. And they, uh, uh, they normally play um, Baroque music, you know, from from Europe, from the uh, you know the the like 16th and 17th century, um, on period instruments. So vi uh, strings, uh, violin, viola, viola da gamba, cello, uh, with gut strings instead of steel strings and harpsichord. Um, and so they commissioned me to write a, a a short piece inspired by some kind of element of Baroque music. And I chose this little. I actually happen to have a harpsichord here, so um, I chose. I chose this little chord. That. Yeah, what a coincidence. <laughs> um, I chose this little chord progression uh, called La Folia, which uh, the its origins are a little ambiguous. Uh, it's, it's something like 500 years old. Um, and the thing about this chord progression is that it's been used by like hundreds of composers over the last, you know, five centuries or something. Um, because of its sort of like flexibility and uh, the, the ways that uh, the composers can kind of like use it to, to like meld it to their own ideas. So it's, it's really short. It's just this little chord progression that goes. And so I was really interested in, in the idea of using this um, this simple collection of like seven or eight chords in a row um, as a way of trying to uh, push myself and and see what I could what I could do musically with this you know very simple uh, box. Very nice. Um, and then it came to you, Vanessa, I guess, and uh, tell us a little bit about um, how that inspired you to create the piece that you did. Okay. Um, so this piece started. I think um, in the spring is when I started kind of thinking about wanting to do something. And I really didn't know what it was kind of the pandemic was still kind of fresh. And I was really thinking about art in general and really our field of dance and what that all meant. So for me, it was, it was really personal. It was thinking about how do I continue in this? Um, 
all of my colleagues, how do we continue in this? And so with all that kind of unsettling feelings, I thought, you know, what's gonna ground me is actually to make something and really take the time and find space and figure out how I can continue doing this. Um, so that's where it started. I didn't really know where it was gonna go <laughs> after that, but um, just really, it, we ended up having to rehearse outside throughout the summer. And I relied heavily on Cody and Colleen and we had just a really wonderful time um, talking and experimenting with movement and playing with different ideas and creating just loads of information. Um, so yeah, that's really where it started. And because of the summer, there were lots of fires everywhere and we couldn't really rehearse in a studio. So there were a lot of restrictions and just figuring out um, what we could do and the possibilities within that, with those restraints, I think is really where this started. And um, I think it ended up being a beautiful process and um, yeah, and, and the time that we spent too, I think was valuable because usually when you're in a studio, you know you have a performance, you have a deadline that yes, it comes, stuff comes out out of that, but to be able to take the time, I think is just, I, I've, never, I've never done it before. It just to be able to have an endless amount of time to think of creating a piece was really just wonderful. <laughs> Great. And I, we'll, we'll go to the video in just a minute, but I wanted to just ask about the location that you chose to shoot this before we get into that, because this will look kind of unique. Yeah, yeah. so the location, um, it's a secret spot. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where it is, but it's um, it's, it's just outside of Portland. Um, called, it's a place called Salvi Island. And I love going out there. A lot of us in the Northwest are very nature minded. And so it's one of these spots where it's just beautiful and calm. And, and I love the mud flats and every day it's slightly different. And I went out there and I just thought this is almost like the perfect studio. It's flat. Nobody's going to get hurt. I mean, the mud is soft. We don't have to wear shoes. And it just struck me as a place that I felt like dance needed to be there. It was already dancing on its own. And so thinking about the setting as the, the third dancer really in it, I just saw that it would work there. Fantastic, great. Um, well, once again, I'll suggest to viewers to um, uh, use the comment boxes. Um, also, you know, like our videos and subscribe to them like everyone says on YouTube, we always love that. Um, and uh, again, we will fade away and we'll bring up La Folia.
Okay. Wow. What a again. I can't believe how fantastic all three of these pieces have been tonight. So, uh, thank, thanks, everyone. Um, so uh, for this one, we're we have an embarrassment of riches tonight because we have so many of the people involved in creating this piece all here. So uh, everyone who is here on the Zoom call, please uh, unmute yourself and show your faces, <laughs> um, and uh, we can uh, kind of talk to you. Um, you know, one at a time or in group <laughs> about um, uh, how you were part of the creation of this piece. Um, uh, I'll say that, uh, especially for um, shows that we do um, at the museum, it's rare for us to get to talk to a costume designer. So I kind of wanted to, to um, start right in uh, with Christian and uh, and bring you into the into the mix right away, just because it's it's different <laughs> for me. <laughs> so if you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, the, the process uh, that went into working on the costuming? For this one? Um, well, whenever I do uh, start costuming, I always uh, talk to the choreographer and, and also uh, on my own listen to the music and then see if, um, if the choreographer has any ideas. And uh, for this, like, uh, uh, and a lot of it also depends on the location. And so for this, I, um, I really wanted to, with many of my works, uh, I like to enhance uh, the, the movement or the location with, um, with, with the costumes. And I like to trans help transport us to another time and maybe even like another place. Um, and with this, I, I, I tend to usually go and do uh, a lot. And I, for this one, I thought it would be really nice to um, do something simple to see the bodies and I, uh, I like to mix um, the old with the new. So I think like this definitely, um, these silhouettes to remind us of maybe something Grecian uh, mm. and uh, mixed in with, um, with silver leather, which is very now. And then also the silhouette of, of the Boussier top with the keyhole. So it's kind of this mix of old and new. And, and with this, which was uh, unexpected and which I really love, which I'm going to use for other uh, other other works down the road is that I loved how the dancer's hair really like pushed us into like a different time because I was even thinking yeah. like with the costumes alone it could have really felt it it may have stuck it in a certain time but with the color of their hair like I, I totally loved that it transported us to um, something a little a little different than just maybe thinking like we were in Grecian times by a river. Right, <laughs> that's terrific. Did, and did you know about the location of the filming before you chose like the color palette and that sort of thing, or was that a happy coincidence? Or I knew that it was going to be by the um, it was going to be by a, a river and in water, and and so uh, but I usually and I usually tend to go with like bright colors, but I think the like mutedness of this was really nice and 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 then i think that's why their bodies and their hair really popped right yeah absolutely yeah that's uh definitely definitely came across so how, how terrific and lovely um so um as long as we're talking about the dancers um maybe we can talk to um cody and colleen um and talk to you all um about your uh, experiences you know working on the creation of it and then also the the actual filming um you know it, it, in other words the development and then also the, the filming of the, of the piece but either of you want to take it away <laughs> sure i'll i'll start um hi everyone i'm colleen um well for me this was my very first time doing dance on film ever so that was really exciting but also such a different environment and headspace and body space did it get into. Um, we ended up working a lot outside because we were going to be performing outside. And so it was so different from being inside a small studio, a confined space. I feel like we're so mm -hmm. used to being very focused on like, okay, let me make an internal process to create an external world. And then we would get out into the space and it's like, okay, there's all this space now. <laughs> and there's so sure. much more stimulus to pull from, which was a very different um, place to work from. So there was a lot to take in. And at the same time, like when Steven came in, 
we really had to like focus on the smaller details more than we normally would. Like Cody and I did a lot of like live performance, big proscenium stage. And then this was so different in that we would come in and we would focus on these very small details and little parts of our body or like gentle motion of the shoulder. And that was really wonderful to do. It was a whole different way of experiencing how to perform and like really getting into the subtleties was the most fun for me, for sure. And then I also love rolling around in the mud, but Vanessa could tell you more about it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, we, I think we lost Cody for a minute, but I'm not sure. Cody, are you back? No, I think, I think we're still missing him. We'll try and bring him in a little bit later. <laughs> um, but um, let's see. Uh, so since you segued into Vanessa, maybe Vanessa, you can talk a little bit about um, how you you know, worked in worked in the space, worked with the dancers, um, and and then we'll, we'll talk about the filming later. But maybe just talk a little bit about the, the types of things that Colleen was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with with the dancers, um, I wanted us to start from a personal place because that's really where I was coming from. Is like, what what do we all feel right now? What are the changes that are happening in our lives, and how do we bring all of that, almost like therapy, like all of that into this. <laughs> And so um, I sent them off with some imagery and they both did completely different things. We were in a huge field and Cody went off and created probably two hours worth of movement. And Colleen went and studied her images and started writing just the most beautiful poetry. And so two very, very different minds happening. And really that's where it started. And I think, um, with Colleen, it's, uh, we started off feeling more earth, more um, groundedness. And with Cody, I went more with messaging and um, like water, um, it, the importance of water. And so how do we get these messages out? The importance of, of our environment or, or anything really. And so that's kind of where it started and that started generating movement. And then it just started morphing into really changes because we saw in the location on that shoreline, just that specific spot in the world, how much it changed between spring, summer, and fall. And being out there in the summer, just you know, bathing suits and sunning and having a good time creating movement into this sort of like this feeling of fall where things are, are dying, things are moving on and um, the tides changed. And it really, I think being outside, changed our way of rehearsing and thinking and moving in a way that we've never experienced before, especially being in a studio, you don't feel those things. And so I just thought that was so special. And that's really kind of, we just had a deep experience with the creation of it, the process of it. Yeah, great. And maybe you can talk a little bit about the use of the, you know, the, for lack of a better term, the boundary between the fluid boundary Sorry, bad pun, but fluid boundary between the water and land, um, kind of and how you played with that, um, you know, putting the piece together. Yeah, um, that boundary, I, I thought of it as, and, it, and the music fits so well too, because it really, yeah. the first section and the second section, it's like, it was made that way. <laughs> and I would love mm -hmm. to hear from Danny, like when you were making it, what images did you see? What was, I'm so curious to know, like when you're making it, what things were going on in, in your mind. but thinking about uh, the messaging of the first part where it's quick and bright and lots of things are happening. I just thought that was perfect for Cody as water, sprays of water traveling through the air, just I think was so beautiful. And then going into the pushing, the heaviness, almost the sorrow of earth, you know, things dying, leaves falling. Um, and then bringing that together in a way, it almost to me represented these two elements but then it was almost the personification of these elements that it emerged in these two people and these two people became the shoreline. It, they became a conversation. Um, uh, they needed each other and the changes that happened within that. Yeah, absolutely beautiful and great. Yeah, it, it, it really, that definitely comes across. So that's, that's terrific. Um, Danny, if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll bring you back in to, to answer Vanessa's question about um, what, what, were you, what kind of uh, things were in your mind as you were creating the piece, besides the, the stuff that you had already told us about a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, like, so much of what I was doing at that time with this piece was all very, like, ab abstract, kind of dorky composer, you know, theoretical stuff. And, like, the, the, the reason this is so just, like, breathtaking to me is how 
how you brought it into the world, like, you know, into the world, you know, um, and like the way that, I don't know, just watching it, I'm just, I'm just stunned by um, everything from like the smallest, like microscopic details to, to that like large scale structure is reflected so perfectly or just, or like, you know, it, I was watching it this time, I was thinking about how the music itself is a kind of body you know, that's folding and mm. contracting and expanding and the yeah. way that um, everyone, including the camera work too, right? Like, and the environment like reflects that, this like kind of giant multimedia body, <laughs> art body thing. Yeah. Um, and so sure. Vanessa, I'm not answering your question, but like, I think uh, what, I, what I was really drawn to subconsciously back then and what you like manifested now is this idea of, I talk about this when I teach composition, like, um, presenting like a this and a that and then trying to smash it together in some way. And there's something for me about the way it's so beautifully captured. Yeah, this like um, kind of alchemical, like trying to combine these two things that are, that, that can't, be com can't be perfectly combined. But like, like you said, it's like, it's, it's about that, that liminal zone that like um, that threshold, like exploring what happens on the threshold. I'm yeah, being very vague, but. Yeah. It's it's so beautiful, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, but it's uh, not not big at all. I was, that was I think that was plenty specific. Um, and so uh, so I'd love to I'd love to bring in uh, Stephen now, who um, uh, created the film. Um, so um, and so that's a whole another layer. You know, this is the kind of thing as as we've been talking about tonight. That you know, this is a new this is a new thing that uh, that well I shouldn't say it's new. Dance companies have been doing creating dance for film for a while. Um, but it's uh, but it's uh, nice to it, it's a thing that certainly exploded recently. Um, um, so Stephen, can you talk about how you came into the project and um, and what you know what you brought to it and how uh, how you set about doing what you did? Yeah, uh, it was just a I was very fortunate to have been asked to join the this team, incredibly special right from the get go. Uh, it was this collective energy that just kind of swept me away, man. I really enjoyed it. Uh, when we got there, it almost felt like it was an extended camping trip or something. It just, <laughs> uh, the location was a huge influence on everyone. And it felt like such a conversation uh, every day, every time we met, whether it was through movement or, or words. And, uh, what I really try to do is listen, just see what are they trying to accomplish and, and how can I help? And uh, I really enjoyed bringing the camera closer to the dancers. I think that may be one way that dance film uh, is a bit different than watching a dance performance is, wow, you can be almost as close as a dance partner or, or a, like a, a confidant that, that they're telling you something very expressive and personal and you can be that close. So I'll stop yeah, there. Sort of like, no, that's, that's terrific. I mean, it's similar to, you know, um, you know, live, like, I don't know, opera singing versus someone singing into a microphone where they really sound, you know, listen to a microphone, they sound like they're right, they're right in your ear. <laughs> um, and the very you know, similar thing with the visually now, we're not, we're not seeing something from 50 or hundred feet away. You're, you're like right, right there. Or you could be in either case or, or fluctuate between one and the other. Um, so yeah, it's terrific. Were there any, any particular uh, difficulties you encountered shooting in that location? It's just mud and water and things like that. I imagine, you know, problems probably came up. Yeah, the temperature of the water. Oh, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. huge concern. Was, uh, <laughs> remarkable bravery, the way <laughs> Colleen and Cody continued through. <laughs> it was when you, when you dip your face into that water there. Every time I, I sort of shiver. How did you? How did you guys <laughs> filmed like at sunrise for that shot as well? Right? How um? How did you prepare for? that experience in your life? I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> dove in. <laughs> um, no, it was hard because it was like, we got there when like the sun wasn't even up. It was like dark. We have our like phones on like flashing to get us like <laughs> down the river. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where like, okay, we got to do it. Let's jump in the water. <laughs> 
Cody, were there any other things? We weren't able to talk to you a little earlier um, when we talked to Colleen, but were there any, any particular things you wanted to talk about in terms of the process of creating the piece and, uh, uh, and, and the filming too? Yeah, um, I think that um, it was it, like a, a, a metaphor for the entire process of the pandemic. Um, <laughs> And, and, and I think that the piece is a lot about resilience and about shift. And that's kind of what this piece went through. It, be, it was so many different things. And so the layers um, that came to be the final process or prod, product were, were influenced by what we were experiencing through the process of the pandemic. Right, sure. <laughs> the isolation. Right. Unity. <laughs> Great. Um, very good. I, I'm taking a look here. I'm not seeing uh, many questions coming in or comments from, from people right now. This is your, kind of your last chance to, <laughs> to add a question onto the YouTube stream. If there's anything that's, that's come up for you that you'd like to talk about. Um, uh, meanwhile, back to, back to Vanessa really quickly, I guess. Um, are there um, anything that you, and this is, I guess, apparently the premiere of showing this to anyone online. Is there anything that you're sort of taking away from it that might inform future projects or any anything that you see seen now that you didn't see while it was happening? Oh, absolutely. I think this is still a learning process for all of us in the dance world, trying to just catch up with film. Um, and I have learned so much from the whole team, Stephen, like teaching all of us really what what we could see. I still do this. He said, do this and look, and that's what the camera sees. And I'm doing that all the time, even in life, Stephen. I'm <laughs> going like that. I'm trying to figure out, oh, how would this look on film? <laughs> um, so just learning about it and and the process of that and editing and um, the dancers too, like endless thank yous to the dancers. Oh my word, just giving up so much of time and, and energy and um, building this piece really from, from the ground up. And um, that I think is, it's just for me, like what I keep, what I keep progressing with choreography, I, I progress as, uh, as each piece evolves. And so what I've learned from this, this whole process, I think I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. It was just so valuable to do this first one. And so then going on to the next project with Lyra, I will take this information and be able to now bring that into something different. Oh, fantastic. Um, we do have one question come through from our very own Kate McCry, who is asking um, if any, any of you artists um, inspired by uh, particular uh, dance or movement films, like ones that you might have seen in the past or, or know, know something about. And maybe, maybe Stephen might be someone to talk to about this or maybe, or the dancers or anyone. Um, I anyone, have wants to, anyone wants to feel this? Yeah, okay, great. It, it's a very <laughs> different tone um, and it's actually a commercial that I've watched a few times. A, a friend of mine mm -hmm. who's in film who's not a dancer showed it to me. And I think it's for a perfume called, it's either Kento or Kenzo. And she's in this gorgeous ball gown and she's kind of like strutting around this big, um, I don't know, it looks like some like magnificent gala building. And then she starts like doing this really weird, crazy dancing and she has her own like dance party. And it's it's just so fun. It's a little bit of a different tone <laughs> than the film that we can watch, <laughs> but I highly recommend. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, anyone else have any uh, answers or, or uh, ideas about that? Yeah, I, I was going to say that, you know, it's been over the last several months, like just getting to like really dive into, I've, I've been very interested in film um, for years and have kind of dabbled in it, but, you know, especially in the first couple of months, like really just taking the time to like research and to like see what's been made and like mm -hmm. what's already happened in this field. And um, there's a piece that uh, Tom York did called Anima. It's from music from his album by the same name. Uh, and I can't remember right now, I feel so bad, the company um, that he collaborated with, but um, it was really amazing just to see how, you know, he, he really just human movements, um, you know, filmed in a certain way, like can express so much. Um, 
And again, of course, we all love live theater, but as Vanessa was saying, like, get and say, Stephen, like getting to move in closely and see Colleen's face move across that sand, you know, you don't get that from a, a proscenium stage. Um, and I think there's so much like intimacy that can be cultivated with film. That's sort of what I've taken away as I've been kind of studying and seeing things. And I think that's such a, um, a special thing, especially in this time when there's so much isolation. I think just getting to see even the two of you just simply like touching and connecting physically was so beautiful. And, um, you know, obviously knowing the process and, and the precautions that were taken to make that happen, you know, um, that it's special and that like connection um, in this film and just the way that we're able to see it in, you know, in film is just really something I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to create and in, in this new medium. I vaguely remember what it felt like to touch people. Just sort of vaguely. Um, so I'm terrific. Um, well, well, uh, Cody, did you have something you wanted to say too? Or is that, that that's, yeah, oh, I, I saw you unmute So. Yeah, I was just gonna go um, actually off of what Robert said um, in terms of like, uh, capitalizing on a moment or a frame mm. um, and actually my mm, the thing that I kept coming to in the process of developing this wasn't so much um, film but it was like immersive theater and the ability to put your eyes on a film like in the in the mindset of a film and like how you mm -hmm. can look at any detail like like a hand and you yourself can focus on that and create your own film. And so, okay, how do you make an immersive experience as a film? And I, I, I think that's what, what I kept going back to. So it's still theater, it's still rooted in performance art. Right. Uh -huh. A different medium. Right, very cool. Um, yeah, we got another another question here from our own Chris Brown. He says, when you're, when you're the film was being shot, and this might be a question for Stephen or, or Vanessa, I guess, um, were there only, sh were you doing short segments of it at a time or were you doing like full run throughs of the, of the choreography and then editing them together later? I'll take this one and say we did, we did shoot <laughs> in, in short pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially for that, for the, uh, for the last segment, you know, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I mean, if you, you're creating a piece for film, there's there's no need to do it <laughs> the other way. Um, and um, you know, I noticed that there are little, you know, very very subtle and very effective little uses of slow motion and things like that too. Were those things that were kind of thought about in advance, or are those things you thought about afterwards? How how did all that work and play into the choreography as a whole? Yeah, the slow motion. I, I did think about it during rehearsals when I would see a particular movement phrase. And just and know that's one where we have to see that just a little slower. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say I, that was some of my some of my favorite use of slow motion I've ever seen because it was it was like I said it was very subtle. It was just just enough to to sort of highlight the moment and kind of make it make it stand out, kind of like rubato rhythm or something. Just kind of slows it down for a second, and then you're right back right back into into normal speed, whatever that. Is. Um, so yes, lovely. Well done. The whole the whole piece is just beautiful from beginning to end. So, um, so yeah, I think we're out of questions now. Um, so um, I guess all that remains is for me to thank this incredible panel <laughs> and uh, everyone at Post Ballet, um, and to thank uh, our own amazing video producer Dave Taylor for um, making all the tech work beautifully and smoothly always. Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe I'll bring Robert back up on the screen to just sort of say a personal thank you to you as the director of the ensemble, um, or of the company, I should say. Um, and uh, so uh, on behalf of the Berkeley Art Museum Pacific Home Archive, thank you for allowing us to premiere these pieces. Oh, thank you so much for the invitation. And you know, the last couple of years, we've had the opportunity to perform in person at your museum and um, really love the partnership that we've been able to start to develop over the last few years and getting to present these films um, with you all tonight really is such a gift. It's, um, I think we clearly all really enjoyed the creative process. And I think, um, you know, especially in this time, like making art and whether you're a professional artist or you just want to like color uh, on the back of a notebook, I think there is something that's so cathartic um, moving through your emotions, um, through artistic expression. And um, so I'm really grateful to have had the opportunity to 
go through this experience with all these amazing humans and and to be able to share it with everyone tonight is really special. So thank you, Sean, and everyone at BAMP yeah. for having us. Sure. Well, we look forward to having you having you back in the museum building in the future um, when everything is back to normal, whatever normal is. Um, so uh, again, a huge thank you to everyone uh, for participating tonight and a big thank you to our audience for tuning in and watching us. Uh, we'll have another one of these in about three weeks. So uh, come back and, and, and see our next little uh, sort of performance and panel. And, uh, and again, on, on behalf of Berkeley Art Museum Pacific Film Archives, thanks to everyone. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye.